for, for her forceful leadership uh, in promoting women's health. Mr. Speaker and my colleagues, when I was in high school a long time ago, I participated in an extemporaneous debate contest. One of the contestants there, a friend of mine, drew from the, the bowl a slip that said, do women think? Do women think? Now, this was a long time ago, but even then, we thought that was a startling question. Do women think? The young lady who drew it, she was really a girl in high school, but who drew it spoke with great grace and strength about women and won the debate, which we hope to do today. I, thought of, I hadn't thought of that debate for a long time, but it came rushing down on me as I heard our Republican colleagues put forth their cuts on women's health, especially eliminating funding for Planned Parenthood. The arguments which, which the Republicans have put forth sound like the same questions of a decade ago. Do women think? It's an assault on the judgment of women. It bespeaks a lack of respect for women to de determine the size and the timing of their families. It's clear that Republicans do not support family planning. It's hard to understand, but it's clear that they don't, and have used the bait on this bill to spread misinformation about the critical work that Planned Parenthood does on behalf of America's women every day. So let us be clear. Planned Parenthood health centers currently provide preventive services to millions of women in need of health care, including the provision of contraception, cancer screening, breast exams, and HIV testing. Further, this debate is not about abortion. That is because federal funding for abortion is already prohibited. That is the law of the land. This debate is about women's health. Every year, Planned Parenthood health centers provide this for women's health. Contraception to nearly 2.5 million patients. Nearly 1 million pap tests identifying about 93,000 women at risk for developing cervical cancer. 830 breast exams helping alert patients to possible cancers. And that is why cutting off federal funding for Planned Parenthood would have a devastating impact on women's health across the country. Indeed, 90, more than 90 percent of the health care provided by Planned Parenthood is preventive care. For majority of the women who use Planned Parenthood health centers, the centers are the primary source of receiving health care services. Elimination of funding means that these women do not have health care of any kind. Today's legislation, which has no chance of passing the Senate and becoming law, thank God, is just part of the Republican agenda that is the most comprehensive and radical assault on women's health and reproductive freedom in our lifetime. And that's saying something. Further, I point out that today, on the floor of this House, this is the 100th day of the Republicans having the majority. Here we are again debating legislation that has nothing to do with the number one priority of the American people, creating jobs. Indeed, after 100 days, the Republicans have not created one job and not have, have not offered a jobs agenda and are instead on the march against women's health and to end Medicare in order to give tax breaks to big oil and millionaires. Some Republicans say that we're here because we did not pass a bill last year. It was shocking to hear even some members of the Appropriations Committee, no better on the Republican side, say that. But indeed, we did. It was held up by Republicans in the Senate. We passed it in the House without one Republican vote, the omnibus bill, and it, but it was held up by the Republicans in the Senate. And in that bill, we cut $41 billion from the President's budget. So today, when I hear our colleagues say, we're cutting $78 billion, 38 today, 37 and a half today. The other 41, which is a larger amount, the largest amount, was cut by the Democrats without one Republican vote uh, at the end of last year. Today, in this latest partisan maneuver, Republicans are perpetrating a, an attack on the health of women across the country and I rise in strong opposition to their efforts. 
we must all stand strong against that agenda against women's health we must all continue to work to create a healthier america and that is why i urge a yes to judge women's judgment a yes to respect their decision on the size and timing of their families and a no for this vote which is an attack on women's health but that i yield back the balance of my time he yields back the gentleman from mississippi Thank you, Mr. Speaker.